Most group 1 salts are soluble in water. For salts containing large anions such as chlorides, bromides, iodides and nitrates, the solubility generally decreases down the group and the lithium salts are the most soluble. For salts with small anions such as fluorides and hydroxides, the solubility increases down the group and the rubidium and cesium salts are the most soluble. In this screencast we'll look at the factors involved in this. Drawing an energy cycle, we can break down the energy of solvation into two steps. In the first step, we dissociate the ionic solid into gaseous ions. This is the lattice energy. In the second step, we convert the gaseous ions into hydrated ions. These are the hydration energies for the two ions. Whether an ionic compound, Mx, dissolves in water depends on the relative magnitudes of the lattice Gibbs energy and the Gibbs energy changes of hydration of the ions. If the Gibbs energy of solvation is negative, the compound is soluble, and if it's positive, the compound is insoluble. The magnitudes of the lattice Gibbs energies and the Gibbs energy changes of hydration of the ions are all large, whereas that for the Gibbs energy of solvation is small. This means that only small changes in the lattice Gibbs energies or the Gibbs energy changes of hydration are needed to cause a change from compounds being soluble to being insoluble. Why is this a Gibbs energy cycle rather than the more familiar enthalpy cycle? Gibbs energy changes are related to both enthalpy and entropy changes. When Gibbs energy changes are large, you can safely ignore entropy changes and understand the process involved simply from the enthalpy changes. This is an approximation, but it's usually a good one. In the case of solvation, the approximation is not very accurate because the Gibbs energy of solvation is relatively small, so both enthalpy and entropy changes need to be considered. As a general rule, compounds with small cations and large anions, or large cations and small anions, are soluble. Let's think why this is. Compounds with a small cation and a large anion have one very large Gibbs energy change of hydration, that for the cation, and this dominates the energy cycle. A similar thing happens for a compound with a large cation and a small anion. There's one very large Gibbs energy change of hydration, this time for the anion, and this dominates the energy cycle. A combination of one large ion and one small ion means the lattice energy is high, but it's not high enough to counter the very large Gibbs energy changes of hydration. The compounds are therefore soluble. Compounds with small cations and small anions tend to be insoluble. In these cases, the combination of two small ions makes the lattice energy very high. Although the hydration energies are also high, they're not large enough to outweigh the very high lattice Gibbs energy, and as a result, the compound's insoluble. Compounds with large cations and large anions also tend to be insoluble. In this case, all the energy terms are relatively low, and when this is the case, the lattice Gibbs energy tends to dominate. When this is the largest term, the compound's insoluble. Going down group 1, the cation size increases. So for compounds with a small anion, you move from the lattice energy dominating to the energy change of hydration dominating. For compounds with a large anion, the opposite's true. You go from the energy change of hydration dominating to the lattice energy dominating.